I'm going to start by asking you about something that's very current and is making people very excited at the moment, which is bin trail. It's a simplistic question, but I think one that would be helpful. Tell me, what is bin trail? Well, it's really just like a group of close friends of mine. And um, I mean, first, it's just a DJ group. And, you know, it's kind of transcended into a little bit more of like a art collective. And um, we really you know, just have fun and, and collaborate with friends and try to break rules and create new ways of, of making imagery and, and listening to music. Um, it kind of started when we were here in London, actually, and going out a lot and like not hearing the music that, you know, we were in, really interested in hearing. And, um, you know, Instagram was just kind of starting. So we, we really didn't even know what a hashtag was at that time. <laughs> And we're like, all right, we're going to just like make up like kind of the, you know, the most of the moment name. So we like <laughs> called it Ben Trill because like Trill was coming like out a lot in, in the rap music at that time. Um, you know, and, and we put a hashtag in front of the name <laughs> <laughs> and just started like taking over parties and playing the music that we wanted to hear. And now, um, you know every week, every month, it seems like, you know, we're putting out some new form of content, but really there's no like plan with it at all. And it, it kind of like sometimes seems a lot larger than it really is, but it's really just like four friends having a good time, you know, doing things that people say that we can't do. It's interesting to me that you say there's no plan for it. Cause it's a question I was going to ask later, but it seems, fitting now, which is, you know, you kind of mentioned that there have been trillets so of the zeitgeist, you know, it's about kind of online culture, it's about exactly what people are interested in now, like hashtags, branding. Do you, do you think it will have longevity or do you kind of, is that fine with you that it's very much of the moment? Well, we always said that it was only supposed to be for 2013. <laughs> like, that, like, that's why we made it so of that time, you know? We were gonna have like, uh, two-year anniversary party and on the shirt it would just say this was only supposed to last one year <laughs> but um, you know I, I just take it day by day it's it's really just a fun thing we do together as friends and it's really such a, a side project mm. that all of us can just get out like that ratchet music like having fun with your friends like everybody can come to the party side of everybody but I don't think in any way any of us wanted to overshadow who we are as, you know, creative individuals. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like our playground to create ideas that we normally wouldn't, you know, mm -hmm. and um, try new things. And it's cool when people like it. And, you know, sometimes people don't like what we do too, but it's kind of all par for the course. And, you know, we just want to try new things and create new rules. It's interesting you say, you know, it's cool when people like it because people really do like it. Why, why do you think people have just responded so well? I think the, the word is authenticity. And like whenever you have that in any um, creative medium, I think people are drawn to that, you know, and that's really addicting to just human nature is authenticity. We've talked a bit about Bin Chill. As you say, it is, a, it is a side project and there's so many other things you do. So I want to focus a little bit on you as an individual and this means kind of going back to the start of the start of your life and I'm interested what sort of your earliest passions were was it fashion that sort of entered your consciousness first or was it music well it was definitely like music and sports you know I grew up in California and you know when you're a kid growing up in like central California being a fashion designer it doesn't really seem like an occupation like you don't really understand um, the steps that you would ever need to take to be there. You think the shoe just kind of exists. <laughs> you think Nike is an American company, so like these shoes must be made in America. You know, when you're five to 16 years old, maybe, at least for me, I just didn't really understand the process of A to B or how like a silk screen even works. Mm. And um, you know, everybody in my town either worked for like the power plant at the prison for the school system or had like their own business like you know sold baseball cards or like you know my dad was a dentist and um, we were lucky enough to be able to live in in like a nice area but you know 
you kind of only grew up thinking that you could do those jobs. And it wasn't until, you know, I, I was playing, you know, you call it football, but soccer a lot. I, I got to travel to Europe and, um, you know, I was pretty good at it and, and it allowed me to travel the world and I met more people. And, you know, one of the guys I met along the way was this guy named Keith Richardson and he had, he had a clothing line, but he was also like a, a soccer player. And um, the line was called like Corpus. And I decided that I wanted to like drop out of college and like intern for him. And it was like kind of a, it was a denim brand to start, but so I just started running kind of denim production in Los Angeles. And that's how I really found out about clothing and found that like, you know, it could be like really a job. You didn't really mention music. When did that kind of passion come? Uh, you know, in LA, <clears throat> when I was like 18 to 20, um, just working in, in factories doing production for Corpus, um, I was just DJing a lot at like the nightclubs there. Like I couldn't even drink and there was like this woman that did the door at mm -hmm. all the nightclubs. Her name was like Jen Rosero. And um, she just thought I dressed cool and like would let me in. But like that was kind of like the last height of like LA going out. Like there was this place called Spider Club that like, you know, it was like when Paris Hilton was like going out every night and like DiCaprio and like you know, a real like super club where everybody would go and you would actually like, there was like an energy around it, you know, for, for like Hollywood and you know, I got to go there and DJ and I met a lot of people and you know, one of the guys I met, you know, uh, gave me a job designing for this line in New York and that, that brought me there. But I only had the job in New York for like six months and I got fired and then <laughs> had to go back to DJing again in New York. But um, Why did you get fired? So, because I wasn't really showing up to work on time every day. <laughs> <laughs> having a little bit too much fun going out. You were getting your education <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about your approach to design, because that's still something that obviously you're, you do a lot. Tell me about, about that. Just by chance, you know, this day and age, if you do something, you know, good when you're young, everybody finds out about it. Just mm. the nature of social networking and, and you become judged from that point for the whole entire creative community. And sometimes, or a lot of times, you know, if you're young, say 21, like when I first did anything for Kanye um, or Gaga, like everything that I did at that moment is now, you know, this, they kind of try to label you as like, mm. this is what your ideas are. When in fact, you're just like a 21, 22, 23 year old kid that really hasn't lived life enough and, and you don't really have your own voice yet. And every day I'm still developing what I really have to say to the world, what I want to project as like, you know, my desires, what my beauty is, what I want to say about like existence, existence. And um, I think that's the most important thing is just finding your own voice and sticking to it. And almost like the people that I respect the most have a very laser sharp, you know, idea and vision of, of, of what they're, voice is and they stay within those boundaries and if people want to work with them they come into that to that world. I do want to talk um, a little bit about that working relationship with Gaga because I think that's one of the things that you've become sort of particularly known for and sort of really propelled you into into a position where everyone knew about your work. Why do you think she had such a sort of a huge impact on fashion and she really did inspire so many people it's a similar thing I think to what we were talking about before with this kind of obsessional quality that the internet can yeah have. I mean it's it's one of those things like it's just the perfect storm you know like she had the most amazing team around her she had you know at that time Willow was working with her myself Nicola she had Troy her manager um, you know Lorian her choreographer um, and it was just a really insane people down to like the lighting you know um, stage design like this guy Winky um, from Tate it, it, she just had like the best team possible and at the moment and the music and um, it was almost like you know not fair it was like the NBA all-star team and then you know slowly everybody's kind of decided to do their you know their other things mm -hmm. um, but she, you know, she she was making great music at that time, and like um, 
also, you know, she, th you know, through Nicola, we were working with just the best image makers in the world. You know, at that time, Hedy wasn't designing and we got, you know, Hedy to do that album cover. And that was like really huge and respected. And same thing with Nick. We got Nick to do all of the, the show visuals. And, you know, if you start there with like Nick and Hetty, then, you know, you're at that time, you, you know, you, you kind of have the, the gates open to you. Mm. So that, you know, that was it. It's, it's, it's really like unexplainable, you know, it, it's just, just, uh, just, just the perfect storm. Mm. She had the best of everything, best moment, music, you know, but, you know, I, I'm not going to be like ignorant in any way and say that like that can be recreated for everybody, you know? It's just one of those unexplainable things. You know, you mentioned ASAP, you mentioned Eddie Slimane, but people who've who've inspired you or had an effect on you. It doesn't necessarily have to be people you've worked with. Well, definitely, you know, Nick Knight. Um, you know, after I stopped working with Gaga and I, I was just like um, needed a break from from like being in a new city every single day. I came to London and like lived here and worked with Nick for about three and a half months. And um, that was like amazing, you know, and that kind of started our relationship outside of just collaborating on Gaga stuff. Well, I mean like Kanye is the same way for me too. He's, he's like another like most inspiring person in my life besides Nick, you know, like the guy, he just is the hardest worker and one of the most talented creatives in general. He's like Da Vinci or something, like really well-rounded and, and can really be amazing at so many different things, um, whether it's music, whether it's architecture, um, design, like he is truly, truly talented and as a Renaissance man in, in everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think about that, you know, I, there's a great quote that like, great leaders create more great leaders and like I think it's part as a creative and maybe even as like a man that you you know you look to to elders to like teach you and then it's you learn a lot about yourself teaching others and I think it's just a positive thing f to be open to to sharing ideas and um, I think that's how new great you know moments come mm. in, in in history and culture and so you truly believe that he is sort of a visionary? Definitely, yeah. I mean, the kind of boundaries to be broken just being like, <clears throat> you know, like a black person in fashion. Like, I mean, yeah, I said it, you know, the, like, can you name the amount of black fashion designers on one hand? There's like Andre Walker. He was like the very first one from New York. There was one guy that like designed Givenchy there's Shane from Hood by Air, there's Virgil, you know, to be able to, to kind of like make it to where he's had from Chicago. And then also just like hip hop music, you know, that, that, that hasn't always been accepted in, in fashion, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that I try to be a part of as well to, to have it be like the soundtrack of some of my fashion films, just because it's part of who I am. It's what I love. It's the kind of music I choose to listen to in my, free time, but that doesn't mean that I'm ignorant to like the history of like Couture or Hardy Amy's being the first Couture house in England or Hartnell or Kilgore and Savile Row and like old McQueen shows. Like I, I, I'm a student of fashion, but I happen to like really ratchet, you know, hip hop music. And <laughs> that shouldn't like discredit the kind of clothes or ideas that I want to show the world, you know, just because. I like that kind of thing. And, you know, Kim Jones at Bhutan is a good friend of mine too. And, you know, he was very inspired by streetwear culture, but he designs for the most luxurious house, arguably in the world. Um, and he goes to, to work in like Supreme, like camo pants and sweatshirts and wears like Jordans, you know, to work. So, you know, that being said, Kanye's really, a pioneer for musicians, for Americans, for black fashion designers in, 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 in the design world. And, um, you know, 
the kind of um, current he's had to like swim against is unparalleled and, and he you know he never gives up and he just is exactly who he is and you know you only get just truth and awesomeness from him <laughs> and like yeah I'll, I'll always be so thankful and and uh, you know respect everything that he's done for me and and for anybody who's come after him you kind of touched on it a little bit before and it's it's taking things in a in a I guess a slightly different direction but I want to talk about this kind of art direction or creative direction role because it's it's a tag that's applied to you a lot in a lot of projects yeah it, I think that anybody can Anybody can label themselves an art director for, um, you know, for lots of various things, but I don't know. I think that a lot of the, the art directors that I respect the most, they continually work with like, you know, groups of people like, you know, Peter Saville is a great art director. He worked with Nick on like all those Yoji campaigns and, you know, so many, so many different projects. And, um, you know, because he, he had like Nick and Nick had him, they could create great work together. So I think me being a creative director and an art director is because I, I fit so many different things because I'm so interested in that idea of like collaboration. And so many great things come from collaboration when you have a great partner to help push you into a new great idea. And that's what I think the great art directors do is they create a, a great, um, environment for for new ideas with somebody that they have a great creative relationship for and great ideas come from that.